Hi, my name is Alan Seaman, and I'm going to be introducing this presentation on developing multilingualism through immersion, the importance of motivation. In a few minutes, you'll hear from my two co-presenters, Esther and Daniel, who will be telling their stories about how they became bilingual and what motivated them along the way. There are two issues that I'd like to talk about to frame today's presentation, and those issues are immersion and motivation. So I'd like to take a few minutes here at the beginning just to explain some of the theory and concepts behind each issue. First, immersion. We know that when children are young, they learn well through language immersion. The first language acquisition processes that are evident during the first five years of life can also be used in the elementary school years and even beyond to help people acquire second and third uh, languages through the process of immersion. So there is a methodology known as content-based immersion, content-based uh, language teaching, uh, and it's used worldwide in various schools through an approach known as structured immersion to help children learn more than one language. Typically, um, Immersion programs emphasize both proficiency in social language, what's known as BICs, or Basic Interpersonal Communication Skills, as well as academic proficiency, which is known as CALP, or Cognitive Academic Language Proficiency. Both of those concepts come from a theorist named Jim Cummins, who is associated with the Canadian immersion model of instruction that's used now worldwide in national and international schools. And so we'll hear some stories from my two co-presenters about their experiences in school learning various languages, both on the social and academic levels, through the process of immersion. Here's a quote that emphasizes the value of immersion. Immersion children consistently perform at or above grade level scholastically. They're on a par with their monolingual peers in English language development and by the end of elementary school, they are functional bilinguals. This is the ideal that underlies dual language programs and various kinds of English language teaching programs throughout the world. And uh, so we'll look at a couple of examples, not from the United States, where I'm from, but from Japan and Guatemala, some very different parts of the world. The second category that we'd like to talk about is motivation. You may be familiar with these basic categories for motivation, what are known as intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivation comes from within. It's our own personal desire to learn uh, a foreign language and uh, it's often built around our own interests and goals. Extrinsic motivation comes from without. It's um, motivation coming through grades and tests, things that are set up by the teacher and uh, by an educational system. There is also integrative and instrumental motivation. Integrative motivation occurs when we want to integrate with a group of people and socialize with them, become part of that group or that culture. And instrumental motivation refers to motivation that comes from um, a desire to use a language to achieve some personal goals, such as have a, a posting in um, a company uh, outside of your country, or um, to a achieve um, you know, proficiency that would allow you to travel or study abroad and so forth. So we have these four types of motivation, and they've been written about extensively by theorists such as Zoltan Dornier. We also uh, would like to refer to Dornier's uh, motivational system where he, uh, I think, very helpfully talks about an ideal second language self, how we visualize ourselves in the, the foreign language and um, use that as a source of motivation. So when we're beginning to learn a language, we might visualize ourselves five years down the road, being a proficient speaker of that language, traveling, studying abroad, and doing a variety of things in the language that we can't currently do. And uh, Dornier contrasts that with um, 
the ought to second language self, have what we ought to know in the language, which is a much more negative way to frame this, and also the second language learning experience, such as uh, classrooms that provide uh, a lot of different kinds of motivation, including extrinsic motivation of grades and test scores and so forth. So um, as we talk about uh, motivation and immersion, uh, this concept of the ideal second language self is an important one to remember. And um, I'll discuss this a little bit with you at the very end of the presentation. So we're going to start out by hearing from Daniel and his experiences in an immersion program and what motivated him as he was acquiring multilingualism in Japan. Thank you so much, Dr. Seaman. Uh, my name is Daniel Kim, and I'm a current graduate student at Wheaton College Graduate School in TESOL, an intercultural studies program. Just as Dr. Seaman has, in has introduced me, I had a privilege to have all three cultures and all three languages of Korean, Japanese, and American, also known as English. This is because I was born in a Korean home, but our family had to move to Japan, uh, which is Tokyo, Japan, where I grew up. And at the same time, I had a privilege to attend a private English Christian school from fourth grade till senior year of high school. Learning all three languages weren't such an easy process, and there were some positive experience and also some negative experience. And I would like to share some of my personal experience of learning language. First, I was able to learn English in the age of six until third grade of elementary school. This is when I was personally attending a Korean public school and my parents decided to send me to a cram school, which is also referred as hagwon in Korean language, more, more of an after-study program in the United States. And this is when I had to attend an after-study program for around three hours every single day from Monday till Friday. I didn't have any, any uh, na native teacher and most teachers were all Korean natives, and all the assignments were all explicit methods, such as vocabulary memorizing, um, also filling the blank and learning some grammar. It was all mostly explicit methods. And this really helped me to score high in standardized testing, and this was because my parents, along with any other Korean parents, were excited for us to score higher in any kind of test so that we can either go study the overseas or transfer to an English international school. However, I had a privilege to transfer to an English private school in fourth grade, and this is when I was able to receive a completely implicit learning methods along with an immersive learning culture. My parents were first worried. Actually, they were very confident at the same time because of the training that I received in South Korea and after study, after school program. But they saw me not, they saw me I'm not being able to speak English wholly. And they saw that an implicit method really working well in my life when they placed me in an actual English speaking classes along with the native speakers. My English improved a lot. Oh, really significantly and this is when I can <laughs> attest uh, that implicit and immersive learning methods really helped me to acquire the English language. At the same time as I've introduced I was able to learn Japanese and believe it or not I am still fluent and I had not a single teacher or instructor uh, with the Japanese language. I simply acquired this language through an immersive culture where I was surrounded by my friends who speak Japanese and my parents decided to send me to a local Japanese church where only Japanese was spoken. So every single weekend, including Saturday and Sunday, I was only speaking Japanese with my native Japanese friends. And from Monday till Friday, I was speaking English to my colleagues and at home, I was speaking Korean. All these three immersive culture allowed me to acquire these three languages in a fluent level and I am very, very grateful for these experiences. Similar to Stephen Krashen's theory, I am a huge supporter of immersion model with implicit learning methods and I truly believe that the motivation allows educators to successfully incorporate immersion learning strategies into the student's learning experience. Just as Dr. Seaman has introduced, I'm a huge fan of Zoltan Dornier as well. And Dornier, a renowned researcher, he has four aspects of group dynamics that are particularly relevant. Number one is goal-orientedness. Having a goal in a classroom is extremely important. 
I had a friend who went to a Japanese public school system back when I was in high school in 2016. And this guy went to a Japanese public school growing up, and at the same time, he scored horrible in all his English classes in his public school. However, after meeting myself and some other English-speaking colleagues, he started to have a goal to one day study abroad and fly to the United States and be a film producer. At that time, everyone doubted him. Everyone said he was gonna, he's, he's really bad at English. However, having a clear goal allowed him to be motivated to study English. Although it was not completely implicit, having a goal and a motivation allowed him to study. And now he finished uh, his courses in community college in Los Angeles, California, and now starting a career as a film producer back in LA. Number two that Dornier introduces is norm and reward system. Norm can be very, 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 very um, broad and some of these can be social norm and also reward can be such as food or giving a recess time. And I personally use a reward system in my personal teaching experience when I'm teaching English language in my language academy. For the kids to be motivated and knowing their attention span, I had to make sure that we have a reward for them. Although it was some of them can be objective, like a materialistic, or some can be just uh, more of a rewarding in time, or having a no homework, having a recess, um, having more snacks. And whenever I was providing them with more rewards, they were able to be motivated and acquire the language a lot faster than my other experiences. Number three is group cohesion. Having a group, fitting in the group was my personal uh, way of acquiring the English and Japanese language, especially on the Japanese level because I didn't ever have a, I was never forced to learn the language. I was more leaning to, motivated to learn the language. For example, if my friends are talking about some Japanese local TV shows, to fit in that group, to make sure to be fitting in that conversation, I had to watch the show at home, I had to read about that show, and trying to fit in the culture and trying to fit in the group really allowed and pushed me to learn the language. And lastly, having a classroom goal structure is a very, very effective way to motivate the students. In my practicum class in College of DuPage, my instructor that I am shadowing has al always pushed me to write a clear objective and a goal in a whiteboard before I teach any courses. So that when the, when the students come, they know the clear objective and having a clear goal would, would definitely enhance their learning experience and have them, have them be motivated uh, in English learning. One of my friends, uh, Dr. Kim, who is a current adjunct professor in Teachers College in New York City, has conducted a very famous uh, experiment in South Korea. As many of you guys know, there is an English village, also referred as Yongho Maul, in South Korea, and it was very, very popular. And at the same time, after study program, a cram school that I personally attended, this was also a very famous uh, approach that parents were um, uh, taking to send their kids to learn the language. They did an experiment of how fast they can acquire the language uh, by sending some kids, uh, half of the kids, to uh, English Village and also half of the kids to the after-study cram school. Quite obviously, the explicit kids are in the cram school and after study school pro after after school program did very uh, scored very high in the standardized testing but their speaking level and listening level and actually acquiring so many aspects of language was significantly lower than the english village system however when they did a survey to the parents afterwards more than 70 percent of the parents still decided to decided that it is better to send their kids to the after-study program and the cram school, which is also called as hagwon, as I have said. This is a sad reality, and at the same time, this is a time where educators have to remind that the language learning system should be simply motivating the students and not be based on the parents' motivation. I also had a, a privilege to talk to a professor in Aoyama Gakun University, which is located in Tokyo, Japan, and he said the school's vision of implementing implicit methods and immersive model is so great that they decided to uh, build an elementary school, a kindergarten, including kindergarten, middle school, and high school along with the university so that students can be well prepared with proper implicit learning methods and be able to attend college level with a right education. Although I'm a huge supporter of implicit and immersive environment, I think there is a danger to consider and that is a fossilization. Is in my Japanese learning experience, I was simply I simply learned the language in an immersive model and I didn't have a single mentor or a teacher who corrected my mistake. 
Even to these days, when I'm talking in Japanese, when I'm presenting in Japanese, I still have some, same, some mistakes that I continuously make, and this is because I didn't have any instructor who corrected my mistake, and it, it has been fossilized in my brain. And although my personal experience can't attest enough to persuade the great benefits of the implicit and immersive experience, Dornier asserts that there is consistent evidence from preschool to graduate student level, a gra graduate school setting, that compared to competitive or individualistic learning experiences, the cooperative goal structure is far more powerful in promoting intrinsic motivation. And now I'm going to have Est Esther Ham come up and share her experience in Guatemala. Hi, thank you, Daniel, for sharing your story and um, Dr. Seaman for setting up the theories and stage so well for us to share our stories. Um, yeah, so my name is Esther Ham. Esther, so my name is Esther Ham, and I was born and raised in Guatemala. Um, I both of my parents are South Korean. They immigrated to Guatemala um, in their mid twenties, and I was born and raised there until college, I guess. Um, yeah, so, uh, I grew up going to a small Korean church preschool from the ages of, like, four, um, three to five-ish, and, um, after that, I went to Guatemalan public school from grades one through two. So, um, during my early childhood stages, I was at a Korean and a Guatemalan setting where, um, a lot of the phonics that was being formed and the foundational aspects of language were being formed during that time. Um, I have no idea what to say. But, um, and then after that, starting second grade to senior year of high school, 12th grade, I ended up going to an international Christian school. International school. Should I say Christian? International, say school. international school. International school, where um, I, most of my education was in English and um, a little bit of Spanish. So we've been talking about the motivation, uh, the, actually I want to talk about the immersion factor first. So we've been talking about how immersion really contributes to our language acquisition, and I fully agree with that. Being immersed in social spaces um, especially was very important for me. Um, for example, at home I was immersed with um, the Korean language because my parents made sure that I would learn Korean. And this wasn't in a form of um, teaching grammar or just explicit teaching where you're like, you have to remember this vocabulary, but it was more of uh, a fun and motivational way to do this because I was surrounded by Korean books or Korean TV shows that my parents enjoyed watching or Korean songs and music that we would listen to at home. Also, my mom would have us read a lot of Korean text um, out loud, and this was a fun exercise that we were able to do in the, in the home. But, um, another... Uh, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay. For, um, for church, I was, should I like say about that? Okay. We spent a lot of time at church and at homes of the people that we were surrounded with. And it was all Guatemalan people, all Spanish. And this actually helped so much because our motivation, uh, we weren't living in the Korean towns or the American towns of Guatemala, but it was more of like we were immersed with Spanish in Guatemalan societies and so this really contributed contributed to me um, learning Spanish because we were um, always speaking in Spanish um, talking to strangers maybe in Spanish or like college students especially my parents really focused on college students so a lot of my language acquisition came from speaking to older adults in Spanish um, I and then at school um, when I started going to the international school, this really changed the trajectory of language acquisition for me because I started learning English um, with no prior knowledge of the language at all. Um, and starting from elementary school was actually a really huge blessing because I have two older sisters and they started in middle school and high school. And we can definitely see the difference in like the language acquisition um, levels of acquisition. Um, but being surrounded by friends who spoke in English and teachers who were native English speakers was a huge contributing factor to my English language acquisition. Uh, I cannot speak. Um, and then 
In all these contexts, being immersed in these different social circles and spaces, I was able to realize that my motivations were different for each space. And I think, a hu but one thing in common is the motivation was the, so the social norms and like the social pressure of, um, or the social desire that I had. And um, for example, at home, it was being able to connect with my parents in that way, or being able to understand the Korean culture a little bit better and be able to talk about that with my Korean friends. And, um, and at church, it was being able to uh, communicate with others, um, being able to understand what um, the message was about and really reflect on my own life in the context of Spanish. And um, I don't know how to explain that very well. And then also um, in school, um, the motivation was like very strong, the social motivation, because all my friends, um, we were from different parts of the world and a lot of them were native English speakers. So we would talk about like different movies or shows and books and music that um, was all in English. So it was helpful for me to start watching movies in English and songs in English and read books in English um, to be able to fit in with um, and contribute to the social groups that I was in. Um, and some, mod um, some factors that actually drew me away from wanting to um, learn the language was actually competition and also the pressure of um, the pressure of having something of the pressures of like exceeding a goal I guess um, for example like our class was known our school class was known to be a very like studious but also fun class and that actually motivated me because it was a positive thing we were all working together towards the goal of making um, of being a good class together whereas like when um, junior year and senior year came and we were all looking at colleges it more became a, a competition and that actually drew me away because a lot of my friends were going to SAT schools or going to like academies where they were getting like explicit instruction of what they needed to learn grammatically and just critical thinking and things like that and that actually like did not motivate me because it was too much pressure and like I felt like juggling all these three languages and on top of having that pressure was just so much so it was mostly the social motivation and um being able to feel comfortable and honestly like accepted in those circles for who i was that really helped me um acquire the link the different proficiencies in the languages um yeah so i really appreciate teachers who made the classrooms a uh, place where I could better connect with my friends and really fostered that intrinsic motivation for me. Um, I had a lot of fun. There was a lot of activities that challenged me to grow as a person and not just in my um, knowledge of like, academic knowledge. And yeah, it's a gift to learn different languages and I definitely um, am very grateful for it. We're not done yet. Oh. So, I'd like to conclude by just summarizing some principles for teachers and just take the last minute to do that. Um, so we've heard two uh, experiences from students who grew up multilingual and uh, the factors that motivated them to become multilingual. I'd like to uh, use Zoltan Dornier's uh, motivational teaching cycle to sum this up. Um, so first, you want to create the basic motivational con conditions for students to learn a foreign language through immersion. That means that your classroom climate needs to be warm and affirming uh, and uh, social, a positive environment, just like Esther was saying. And then secondly, um, you want to generate uh, initial motivation, as Daniel was talking about setting objectives, so helping students set goals for learning and visualizing their ideal selves and moving toward that ideal. And then you want to maintain and uh, protect motivation by encouraging students along the way, pointing out when they've been successful and uh, you know, things that they've done well in the learning process and coaching them along as they acquire the language. And then finally, encouraging positive self-evaluation and reflection, having them look back on their learning and see how far they've come 
and uh, pointing out ways that they have grown in their proficiency in English or another language. And all of these are a kind of cyclical process that teachers can use to not only kind of replicate the kind of immersion experience that these two students had, but also um, you motivate students to become better language learners and more proficient in English or maybe even multiple languages. Thank you very much for coming to our presentation.